stick. What club was that at? <laughs> that was admit that uh, a lot of people don't even realize they. I've called her, she hasn't responded. I've called her more than a few times. But the Zulu nation, I'm like, what the hell is this? I know nobody know what I'm talking about. You'll leave me on the island by myself. I don't know what the hell Bishop's talking about. That's what y'all do. Then after class, yeah, I knew what you were talking about. I just don't want to be caught out there. The hell is this? Get on my damn nerves. So read that again. Hey, sis, hey, remember I was telling you about who we are according to the Bible, right? Did you know that our history, right, was stolen from us? Our nationality was taken from us. But we are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. Right? And you say your kids, they go to church with their grandma, right? Now, I want to show you something, sis. You see this image right here? This is what the Christian church is teaching our children. Lies. Right. That Jesus Christ is a white man according to the Bible. This is what's hanging up in the Christian churches today. And our, our children learn how to hate themselves because they don't see God in each other. You understand that, sis? But you didn't know what Jesus Christ looked like, correct? Is it in the Bible? It's not? Watch this, sis. Watch this. Last book of the Bible. Read. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. Bring it out. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So wait a minute, sis. You see this white man right here? Does he have woolly textured hair? He doesn't, right? Who got woolly textured hair on the planet? We do, right? right? Watch this though, read. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. So sis, watch this. Our people have been going to the Christian church for decades. And none of them are able to tell you why his eyes was red as fire. What was Jesus Christ's first miracle? What was Jesus Christ's first miracle? Jesus. What was the first miracle that he did? He turned water into wine. Don't get distracted by that, sis. He turned water into wine, right? That was his first miracle. That's why the whites of his eyes were red. Because he drank wine. In moderation. Right. But watch this. Read on. And his feet like unto fine brass. His feet like unto fine brass. The color of brass is brown. Or a gold-like color, right, sis? Watch this. Read on. Because it's going to give you the different shades of what color is talking, to, uh, talking about. Read. As if they burn in a furnace. So first it told you that it was brown. Right? Like brass. Then it says, as if it was burned in a furnace. Since if you take that brown and you burn it, what color is it now? Huh? You can't, you, sis, it's black. According to the Bible. You can bring your kids over here, sis. They need this understanding. Right. Say what? You, you about to plan a party? It's your daughter's birthday, right, sis? What does the Bible say about birthdays? I'm not sure. You're not sure? Is it in there? Is that in this Bible? You don't know? Let's see what the Bible says, right? If we should be celebrating birthdays. Because how many times were you born? You were born one time. So why do you celebrate your birthday every year? You only born once. You understand that? That sense. That that don't make sense, does it? To celebrate your birth every year at the age of 30 or however old our people are, we celebrate our birth every single year, but we were only born once. Right up. How does that make sense? What are we doing? You know who custom that is? That's the custom of the same people that put us on cargo slave ships. That's their custom. 
We were forced to do that thing. Let's get that in the, uh, yeah, read what you got. That's fine. Job chapter 3 and verse 3. Let the day perish wherein I was born. Wait a minute. It says, let the day perish in where I was born. Since I want to show you something. When we were in slavery, right? At that time was the worst time to have a child. You know why? Because your children could be taken away from you, sold into captivity. Your daughters were raped. Your little boys were raped. It was a bad time to be born. Guess what? We're still living in that time frame right now because what happens? They still have the ability to take your kids away from you. They still have the ability to do whatever they want to do to you. And there's nothing that you can do about it. So what are you celebrating when you're celebrating your birthday? What are you really celebrating? That's a question you should ask yourself. What are you celebrating? Exactly, Matthew 15 and 3. That's how we were raised. That's how we were raised. We have no idea why we do the things that we do. We just do them. But watch what the Bible says. The Bible got a question for you, sis. Watch this. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 3. Let's see what the Bible says. Read. Matthew chapter 15, verse 3. Bring it up. But he answered and said unto them, Why do, do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Guess what, sis? By our traditions, like birthdays, right? We break the laws of God. Because according to the Most High, according to this Bible, you shall have no other gods before me. That's right. On your birthday, you make yourself a god. Right, bring it out. That's against the commandments. Right. That's the Ten Commandments that the Christian church say they follow. Right. And every single year, they do birthdays. Bring it out. Bring it out. How does that make sense, sis? Where's God in that? Um, as a matter of fact, we quick to celebrate our birthdays. We quick to celebrate the birthday of our mothers and our fathers, right? Right? We do stuff like that. But what about the most high? What about his high holy days? Bring it up. Such as Passover, Tabernacle, right. Day of Atonement. Bring what about up. those things? That's what it means in Matthew 15, but we transgress the laws by our tradition. Because when you look at this Bible, we do nothing that the Bible says. But everything that the white man tell us to do or allows us to do, we do. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Bring it up. We do those things, but when it comes to the Most High, I, hey, we, we, we ain't got no time for that. You understand that, sis? Birthdays are not of God. Bring it up. That's not of God. You gonna listen to this? You gonna look into it? Sis, on that flyer, we got classes seven days a week. We have a school on 2403 Milledgeville Road, right? Our people can come out, learn their nationality, and learn how to get out of the conditions that we in today. Cause guess what? Celebrating birthdays is not gonna change the condition that our people are in today. Guess what? You took your money, you're preparing for a birthday. But you're making your oppressors rich in the process. And the next day, guess what? You still got to wake up to a light bill, a gas bill, water bill. You still got bills to pay. But you made a sacrifice to celebrate an ungodly custom. And now, sometimes, our people have to think about where they're going to put that money towards. What bill is that money going to pay now? Because we done sacrificed making sure our kids have a roof over their head, food to eat, to keep the custom of the other nations. You're making them rich, sis, when you keep birthdays, Halloween, because Halloween is coming up, right? Sis, is it Halloween coming up? Is your kids gonna be celebrating Halloween? You see that? But what is Halloween? What does that mean, sis? Colossians 2 and 8. What does Halloween mean, sis? Hollow means holy. Ween means Eve. So, holy Eve. You're celebrating another ungodly custom. Right. Witches, uh, werewolves, vampires, murder. 
What does that have to do with the Bible? God is against all of that. What? Abortions. Matter of fact, get that in Exodus chapter 18 and verse 21. I'm going to show you something, sis. Watch this, sis. Because on Halloween, right, the real custom of what they would do is they were sacrificing our kids. They were sacrificing our people on Halloween. They changed it up, but it's still the same thing. It's a worship of a ungodly custom. Watch this, sis. Watch what they were doing on Halloween. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 17. Bring it up. They sacrificed unto devils. Hey, sis, the Bible say that they sacrifice unto devils. I want to show you something, sis. You're sacrificing your kids unto devils it. when you teach them Halloween. You understand that, sis? When you teach your kids Halloween, you're also sacrificing them to the devil. So it's not just a custom. You're still making sacrifices because you teach your kids lies. You teach them how to celebrate an ungodly custom. Right. Watch this. Read on. They sacrifice unto devils, not to God. Hey, sis, we sacrifice unto devils, not to the Most High God. Because everything that the Most High God has required for his people, we don't even know. We don't even know what God requires of us. But everything else... Dealing with the world, we know those things, but not the meaning of them. Watch this, read on. To gods whom they know not. To gods whom they know not. Sis, you're about to have your kids celebrate Halloween, and you don't know the God that is being worshipped behind Halloween. You understand that, sis? Our people constantly stay in the, in the midst of wickedness because of, instead of opening this Bible... And reading it for ourselves, we tell ourselves that we love God and that's all we have to do is love and believe him. That's all we got to do, right? In the meantime, we celebrate birthdays, Halloween, Christmas, Easter. Get that. Hey, sis, watch this. Listen carefully. Watch this. I want, I want, you, I want you to get this before you leave. All right? Read. First, first Corinthians. Chapter 10 and verse 20. Bring it up. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. It says, sis, it says that the Gentiles sacrifice. The Gentiles are the other nations. Those are your Africans. Those are your Edomites. Those are your Chinese, right. your Japanese. Right. Those people sacrifice unto devils. Right. Read. And not to God. And not to the Most High God. They don't keep the customs of the Most High. Right? Mm -hmm. They don't sacrifice unto the Most High God. They sacrifice unto devils. Read on. And I would, I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Hey, sis. The Bible says, you listen to this, that we are not to have fellowship with devils. By you celebrating Halloween, you're having fellowship with devils devil right. guess what you dress your children up like witches like you dress uh, okay let's say we don't dress them up like witches you dress them up as superheroes those are your greek gods right. you still sacrificing unto devils no matter what you do all of it is surrounded by wickedness that's right read on verse 22 verse 21 you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and at correction and of the table of devils so you can't sit at the table with the devil and the table with the most high you know what that makes you sis that makes you a traitor that makes you a traitor that makes you somebody that cannot be trusted and that's God's people People that can't be trusted. People that say that they love God, but don't do nothing that he says. That's somebody that can't be trusted. With their mouth, they honor the most high. But with their actions, there is none. You understand that, sis? So you can't partake with the devil and partake with the, with, with the most high God. You can't say that you're a Christian while smoking weed. Right. You can't say that you love God and you hate your people. Those things don't go together. Y'all understand that? How you doing today, sis? What's your name? Vanessa, how you doing? What's your name? 
I can't eat. Diane, how y'all doing? What we doing is we teaching our nationality. Who we are according to the Bible. And what must we do to get out of the conditions that we living in today. Why are we in the conditions that we're in? Why is that? Huh? The what? It's the end of the world? Absolutely, it's the end of the world. But sis, from the time of Moses, we have been a rebellious group of people. From the time of Moses. Uh-huh. Yep, read what you got. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 5, 25. Here you go. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholding good things from you. So, sis, I want you, hey sis, Miss, Miss Diane, oh, she coughing? All right, watch this. Read that from the top again. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 25. Bring it out. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholding good things from you. Because the Most High God had a blessing for the children of Israel if they kept his commandments. But the reason why these good things are held away from you is because of your iniquity, meaning your sin. You understand that, sis? We, our people are constantly in the midst of sin. And then when you open up the Bible and you read it to them, it's like, oh, I, I see what you're saying, but I'm going to keep doing this because that's what I was taught. You understand that? And we have a problem with letting go of the customs that we were taught. And that's why we stay in the conditions that we're in. Is there more on that? That's it? All right. So watch this. Sis. Go to, uh, uh, what's the uh, scripture dealing with? Uh, the mind. Uh, yeah. So, sis, here's the thing. Until we transform our minds, right, and keeping, yes, and keeping the laws and commandments of the Most High God, nothing is going to change. Nothing is going to change. Because how long has the Christian church been around? Years, right? Decades, right? From the time we went into cargo slave ships, they've been here. You understand that? It was the Christian church that set up slavery for our people right. the catholic church those those churches that we love so dearly that we hold so tight with the christian cross there's the same people that put you in the captivity the same people who stripped away your nationality and told you that you now a nigger Bring you're black you know what they say when they when they're saying that when you got to fill out an application and you put black you know what you're saying you're nothing that's what that means you're nothing you don't, you, you're not even worthy enough to have a nationality. They gave you a color. That's how much they hate our people. Read what you got. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Bring it up. And be not conformed to this world. It says be not conformed to this world. Because in this world, what do we have? A bunch of lies, a bunch of manipulation, a bunch of fornication. Things of that nature. So our minds have to be transformed to what God wants for us. You understand? By the renewing of your mind. How do you how do you renew your mind? How do you do that? You meditate? What about you, sis? How do you renew your mind? You meditate? So hit so here's how you renew your mind. This is, I'm going to show you how you transform your mind. Give me Proverbs 16 and 3. Is there more on that? Yeah, finish that off first. And be not converted to, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It says be transformed, right? So if you are always in the midst of sin and that's all you know, let's say I'm a drug dealer. That's all I know. In order for me to be transformed, what must I do? I got to stop selling drugs. If I'm a drug addict, in order for me to transform, what must I do? I got to stop doing drugs, right? I have to apply God's laws and commandments. Right. But the only way I can apply them is if I read them. You understand? You can't change yourself if you don't know what you should be changing about yourself.
Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation 